Hi, my name is Carl Stanley, and thank you for coming along thus far in the course. We're at the conclusion to the session, okay? And then we're gonna move on into a little bit more of a detailed look, okay? So all of the large icons that we've gone through the course so far, I'm going to physically do um, and show you as we go through the course. Excel spreadsheet, um, a Gantt chart, um, and some of them, and the models, uh, the, the actual viewpoints um, that we've talked about so far. So let's talk about the major icons of the course and I'll pull out the key points and then that'll be the conclusion of the session so that you can you know, wrap up where we're going next. Okay, so we started off with a scenario, remember? And I've basically put this course together like a science book report. Let me illustrate. Aim, method, expect a result, actual result. Aim, make me a cake. Method, take some dry ingredients, take some wet ingredients, stick them together, eventually mix them up, different types of mixes, depending on what sort of cake you're gonna make, and then expecting a cake. Oops, did I get a cake? No, because I put it in the wrong cake tin. I stuck it in a cupcake tin, so I got cupcakes, okay? So aim, method, expected result, actual result. Okay, so we've gone through the aim, build me an enterprise architecture build me a town plan method. I'm gonna go through a few steps, get to knowledge into a repository with a content meta model, and I expect to see a blueprint or expect to see uh, wise decisions made and insights given to a, a business. So let me go through the large icons in this course. Um, maybe I'll elaborate a little bit on them and then We'll call it, call it for this section, and then we'll go on to the next section where we go into a little bit more detail. Remember, conceptually, logically, physically. Physically is in the last sections. I'm doing a little bit, in the next section, I'll do a little bit of repetition, but I'll show you some slides. I do some logical demonstrations inside the tool, and then I'll do some physical viewpoint models in the tool as well. So, the goal, right? And a subject, enterprise architecture, context, over time we grow in understanding. Okay, key point here is when you're knowledgeable about something, when you have how everything's hanging together. Remember we related that to a matrix? Matrix of things? Application technology matrix. Business process to um, application. You name it, you can draw lots of lines between lots of nodes and lots of links and you'll get to um, the answer to your stakeholders queries. So in theory, that matrix is just a query to a database. And yes, there's plenty of tools out there, okay? Who's here heard of ServiceNow? It's a configuration change management database. Um, other repositories, you've got project like Primavera, you've got um, iServer, enterprise architecture tool, you can stick the Archimate meta model in it, Togaf meta model, you name it, and it'll start to connect the dots between different, um, different repositories. So now that we have all of that information, we can do some queries. Who are we doing queries for? The business. Okay. So that's the major um, icon to the aim. And we're trying to get to why, the understanding place. So that was the first part. Now we went into the scenario. Then we went into the scenario. We're a general manager. Here's the business. We have to give back through all of our functions and our repository wise decisions or what, sorry, help the business make wise decisions. It's their decision, it's their accountability, but we're, try, we're accountable for helping them get to an answer. Okay, like I said, different repositories. Wouldn't it be nice if they all synced up and they were talking the same language or the same data model? Archimate, right? A shout out, basically, there's about 7,000 professionals on the planet certified on Archimate. I think that's a very small number. 
<laughs> especially given the the import of having all of that knowledge. So I don't, like I said, agile, agile, agile. I'll give you a minute agile, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got the how place all hanging together with certain structured viewpoints and you know how to query it, it's the juice. Okay, so different tools. CMDB, remember? People, process, information, tools. Info, people. So yes, I do like busy charts. <laughs> There's lots of information on them um, and I pad them out as we go. So um, it makes it a little bit more engaging. So I've chosen this, this method just to make it a little bit more engaging. Otherwise you're just staring at a screen. Yeah. Anyway, so people process information and tools. You've got a configuration change management database, say it's service now. All right, hopefully you're not getting cut off down here. Um, say we had even uh, MS project server. Yeah, um, say we had iServer. Yes, I've used iServer. I've used, and we're gonna use Archi, which is basically the Archimate modeling spec in a tool. Makes it quite easy to use. Um, and EA Sparks. Yes, there are the modeling languages that can be put in here. Um, a contemporary, this one I really like, and then I'm just trying to point the benefits to you to motivate you to use that because it's actually built, if you look into the spec, it's actually built like um, the English language. So um, subject, object, verb, right? Noun, verb, noun. Who's doing what to what? Um, server serves file, okay? A server, a noun, an active component, serves, does something, a file, a passive object, all right? Um, very simple illustration, very useful. Now, if we can get use that, that's really cool. MS Project Server, iServer. So we now have our tools we can use to get the job done. There are tools out there that do the lot across all of them. So these are sort of, you know, chewing gum, wrappers, um, matchsticks, RESTful APIs, things between those tools. But there are tools out there who will do the lot. Um, ServiceNow is actually moving its way up into the project portfolio and program management space. And EAS, um, iServer is also moving in that, into that space as well. Like I said, there are individuals who have the remit and who have moved from project management so you might not be able to see that from project management office and they're TOGAF certified. So there are resources out there and they have the remit for cost, scope and time. And these guys are earning big bucks a day. Okay, and they have they come from a certain lane as well. So they're maybe they're from the app stack with project under their belt. Maybe they're from the tech stack with project under their belt. Um, and they're TOGAF certified, so they're looking at plans and roadmaps and things that are coming to them as well, portfolio management. So that's advanced, and if you have that much capability in a person or three people, you can charge big bucks. <laughs> um, so if you're on the, the personal journey to aspire to um, earn a lot of money or um, give architecture insights to people, um, this is a way to go. Okay, so that was the course a scenario for us. Now let's move on into, we went into a meta model, conceptual, logical, physical. All right, there could be sub processes physically with steps and links. This is when we get into sort of the swim lanes and what have you. You could have a logical component like SAP and physically that could turn into multiple components with a relationship that is um, composed of, right? And yes, they've got arrows and stars and all that other stuff in there. I'll explain that stuff when we go through the tool. All right, for SAP, conceptually, logically, physically. Conceptually, 
it's called an email service. Make a shout out to TOGAF, the TOGAF Technical Reference Model, the TRM, used at a, as a foundation for a whole one bank platform um, of infrastructure services broken down into logical nodes, components, physically on different devices. Right? So if we can think like that and keep to those major ideas, we'll be able to run a portfolio of projects and get the answer for our stakeholder. Where are all the dependencies? Look, there's dependencies all over the shop, but we need to be able to boil it down to, okay, say your strategy was to go um, everything online. Um, we have to retire certain old, old systems and we have to start pumping out things to uh, via a service bus out to the internet with an API exchange. Logically, there's gonna be a hot, hot spot, but you have to be able to articulate it in such a way with credibility and roadmaps and to be able to track it. And that could be, here's your infrastructure, your uh, enterprise services bus, and there's lots of projects all trying to land on that for this type of business unit, okay? Getting a handle on all that really good stuff. Then we query our database with different matrices of things. So lists of things, matrices of things, diagrams, of lists of things. So you'll notice in the next part of the course, I've given you um, how to put together a pivot table with, um, or a dump of the database in a pivot table with all the different relationships that you can, you can play with. Okay, so thank you for coming along this, this far. Really hoping this is going to be useful to you in um, the next steps in your career, um, however, you, however you choose to use the information. Um, so thank you very much for coming along. Really appreciate it. And we'll be into the next sessions. And then, at, like I said, put the course together in conceptual with a little bit of repetition for some detail, logical demonstrations of the tools um, put together in a stack, like I said. Put together in a stack. What's the stack? I cover different viewpoints, business viewpoints, start application and technology viewpoints, and then demonstrate how they're actually built physically with some hands-on slides and then some hands-on demos. So please come along for that. I'm really hoping you're enjoying this and thank you for coming along this far into my little course on enterprise architecture, building skills with tools and techniques. Thank you very much.